What's up YouTube? How's it? I'm Jeff Anderson and today I'm going to show y'all how to catch flounder. So Christy and I, we do our YouTube channel called One Fish, Two Fish. But today I want to talk to y'all about catching flounder and specifically with artificials. Um, so in this tutorial, I'm going to show you guys uh, whether you're a beginner and you've never caught a flounder, uh, then that's great. Hopefully this video will help you to catch your first flounder. Um, or perhaps you flounder fished for a while and maybe you're just, you know, trying to um, learn something new, hear a different perspective. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna just talk about the bait and the tackle that you're gonna use to target flounder. Um, walking into a tackle shop, if you're new to fishing, the saltwater fishing or flounder fishing can be a little bit overwhelming. Um, you know, a lot of people are, will direct you to soft plastics, such as you'll have the DOA, these are the DOA shrimp. Um, you'll have some of these brands, this is Fathom, and these are just some, uh, these are some curly tails, some soft plastics. Um, but for flounder fishing, just to get right to it, um, there's really two words that you need to know when it comes to catching flounder with artificials, and that is Berkeley Gulp. Uh, and if I had to go three, let's go Berkeley Gulp Swing Mullet. That's actually four, but hey. And this is the Pearl White uh, swimming mullet, which I'll have a picture right here. Um, and so the pearl white swimming mullet is, you cannot go wrong. Even like this one right here, this is a much larger one and I use this for drum. I'm gonna do a drum fishing tutorial um, in a week or so and I'll you know kind of talk about that when I get there. However, um, this one has tons of swimming mullets, it has tons of shrimp, it has different types of baits. And because it's like this mason jar type thing, you can unscrew it. And this juice right here, um, quick pro tip, is you can just throw different types of plastic of di different different types of plastics in this juice. So let's just go ahead and set the record straight that um, if you are new to flounder fishing, walk into your tackle shop, just go straight to Berkeley Gulp, pick up the pearl white swimming mullet. Um, of course, there's much different. There's of course there's a lot of different colors out there. Um, for the types of bait. You know, your most popular are gonna be pearl white, chartreuse, um, and then you have different variations that go off of that. Um, I would recommend pearl white. Uh, these are not cheap. This one right here is actually $20. Um, and, you know, again, it's, it is totally worth it. I'm not endorsed by Berkeley Gulp. I'm not sponsored by them, but I can tell you that it does work and it works very well. Pearl White works in essentially any different type of water. For flounder, um, you have uh, bucktails, you have uh, these tandem rigs, a high-low rig, which is great. And if I can just make a recommendation for anybody who's trying to get into flounder fishing um, is that when you fish a tandem rig, sometimes the bite can be a little harder to detect and the f and flounder fishing, flounder are ambush creatures. So they lay flat uh, like in the sand and over sh uh, rocks and structure that you know they will blend in with and they'll literally bury themselves in the sand. And then as you know, bait kind of swims by, get uh, mud minnows, you'll get shrimp, crustaceans, whatever, anything that you know passes that flounder, it will it will ambush. Just take my word for this. Flounder fishing can be tricky because they have a, um, it's almost like bass fishing where the bite can be, sometimes you won't even feel it. You won't even know that there's a flounder on. Um, and that flounder, as soon as it, as soon as that flounder um, realizes that it bit into something that is not natural, um, that it's just gonna go ahead and spit it out. Flounder will actually, like, they will suck their baits in. Their mouth, a flounder's mouth will open very, very wide, almost about this wide right here, if you can see that. You know, it doesn't look like that because their mouths are, their uh, body is just so skinny, but their mouth, again, it acts just like a bass, and it will open up very wide, and they will suck that bait in. As soon as they feel that that is a lure, it's not a fish, and they'll, they'll, they'll even swim towards you, and um, your line will just go slack. So you won't even realize that you have a flounder on and you know you literally have to set that hook. So as soon as that flounder takes your bait, 
that's the amount of time that you have to set the hook before it will as fast as it sucked it in it'll spit it right back out so before I get ahead of myself let me just show y'all how to rig this up in the three different types of jig heads that I like to use. So I'm gonna provide pictures of these, but um, the weight of the jig head is very important. Depending on where you're at, um, about three different sizes of a jig head. Um, you have a 1 8 ounce jig head, you have a quarter ounce jig head, and then you have a 3 8 ounce jig head. Now. What you wanna do when you buy your jig heads is you wanna make sure that the shank is very long. I don't want anything, sometimes you'll see the ones that are a little shorter and you, that's what you'll use for like snook or drum or some of those other species. But for me personally, just speaking from my experience, I like to go with something that's a little longer. So you're gonna want something that gets you to the bottom but it's not gonna get you hung up. Um, if you wanna be a successful flounder fisherman, then, you're, then you will get hung up. That's just part of it. You have to do that. You're fishing bridges, you're fishing rocks, you're fishing wrecks and those types of things. So you will get hung up, that's just part of it. You have to accept that and not get frustrated. However, you would not fish something like this 1 8 ounce jig head um, right near a bridge where it's like 15 feet of water. That's something where you would fish like a 3 8 ounce jig head or a quarter ounce. I carry this 1 8 ounce jig head with me when I'm wade fishing and I'm fishing in skinny water, um, like this footage that I'm showing y'all right now. And right there is, we were out at the Outer Banks and we are in about a foot and a half to two feet of water and there's a bunch of grass, um, there's seaweed, and the flounder will bury themselves inside of that and then they'll ambush their prey outside of that. So if you're fishing something like a three eight ounce jig head, you are gonna have a horrible time out there on the water. You're probably not gonna catch any fish and you're just gonna be sitting there just taking grass off of your hook the whole entire time. So that's where something like this one eighth ounce jig head would do better because you're allowing that bait to stay right above the grass. So the most common that I use is gonna be a quarter ounce to a three eight ounce jig head. Now, what you want to keep in mind when you're choosing which jig head that you're gonna fish with is that you want to have contact with the bait and you want to know and be able to feel where that bait is. So when you cast that bait out and it hits the bottom, that you can essentially feel that bait hit the bottom, your line's gonna go slack and then you're gonna reel down and that's when you're gonna start the technique. Okay, so that's what it's gonna look like rigged up. This is your pearl white um, swimming mullet with the curly tail. And you've got a quarter ounce white jig head right here. So one other bait that I would like to recommend uh, that is a Berkeley Gulp bait as well is this shrimp right here. This is a new penny colored shrimp. And if I had to pick a favorite bait that Berkeley Gulp made that I've had the most success with in general, that would be this new penny colored Berkeley Gulp shrimp. This I believe is a three eight, uh, I'm sorry, this is a three inch Berkeley Gulp shrimp. Everything eats shrimp even people. So this right here, this is my favorite flounder fishing um, rod and reel setup. This allows me when I'm weight fishing to be highly effective or if I'm fishing on the boat. This is a Pen Battle 2. This is the 2000 series and it's actually a 6.6 which is a little bit of a shorter pole. Um, sometimes I, I, I like to fish with a seven foot so that's why I have this other one right here. This is a Bionic Blade, it's a Bass Pro brand and I have a Shimano Nacy um, 3000 series. So really for flounder fishing all you're gonna need is something between a 2000 series and a 3000 series. Spinning tackle is what I would recommend. Let's just set the record straight people. When you're fishing with artificials, you do not need to wait to set that hook. So people will tell you to like open the bale, sing sing happy birthday like two or three times and then count down from 10 seconds Mississippi's. Click the bale over, reel down and then set the hook. Okay, that's if you're fishing with live bait. Now, Christy and I here at One Fish, Two Fish, we like to fish with artificials. And a lot of charter captains who make money off of them putting new, inexperienced fishermen, people who are just paying them to catch fish on fish, 
a lot of them only use artificials and they're very biased towards that simply because they know that artificial bait works and live bait sometimes it's just a little bit too complicated so let's just set the record straight people for live bait that's where people are going to tell you that wait 10 seconds allow that flounder to scale its bait it's going to like it has to scale its bait and then it's going to bite down so that's for live bait understand how flounder work and how flounder behave how they kill their prey flounder again they bury themselves in the sand and they ambush their prey they ambush their prey and they come up and just like a largemouth bass they will suck in their prey their mouth will open up and they will suck in their prey just like an electrolux vacuum and as soon as they feel that their bait is not natural that it's you know not a mullet or it's not a shrimp what they're you know used to tasting then they're gonna spit it right back out as soon as they uh sucked it in so if you look at the most experienced YouTube uh, flounder fishermen out there or even talk to them, let's set the record straight, people. As soon as you feel that tick, as soon as you feel just the subtle bite, set the hook. There's a saying in fishing, it's called swings are free. When you're fishing with artificials, specifically Berkeley gulp shrimp, as soon as you feel that bite, you're gonna set the hook. They say, rip its jaw. So flounder are kind of a dumb fish. They'll actually like ambush this swimming mullet and they'll be like, oh man, that, that, that just felt weird. And they'll spit it back out. And then they'll actually sit there because it's so instinctual into them that they are ambush predators that they just can't let something in like an easy meal just easily get away. So as soon as they spit it back out, you're probably gonna feel that bite again and they will come up and they will eat it again. So for all of you new flounder fishermen out there, when you feel that bite, when you feel that end of your rod, or you might even see your line kind of bounce, and that might mean that that flounder's swimming towards you, and you might reel down and you set the hook, but you're too late because that flounder already spit your bait back out. The worst thing that you can do is reel it back in and say, oh man, I missed them. Largemouth bass are a little different. You know, that's where you might not be able to get that bass to strike again. They might be a little spooked. Flounder, nope, not the case. Christy, my wife, Sorry. Okay, here's, a, here's some footage right here. Uh, of an example of uh, we were out fishing and I missed the flounder and Christy my wife said I'm gonna catch your fish and we both know the behaviors of flounder so she casted right back out and she caught the flounder that I um, you know just missed and he probably you know again just kind of bit the tail so what you need to keep in mind for flounder fishing technique is when you feel that bite you set the hook Okay, so the specific technique for flounder is pretty easy when you're fishing Berkeley gulp, uh, swimming mullets, or shrimp. All you're doing is you are fishing it very slow. And when we mean slow, we mean really slow. Like, you are bounce, bounce. You wanna make sure, so you're gonna, so you're gonna cast it out. And I'm gonna also have some footage right here showing you guys uh, some real time footage. But <clears throat> you're gonna cast it out wait for your bait to hit the bottom make sure it's on the bottom and then when it hits the bottom you're gonna actually reel down so that your line's tight and you're just gonna give it just bouncing just all i'm doing is literally this right here and i'm barely even reeling so you're just bouncing bouncing and you're just reeling very i'm gonna actually show you guys how slow right here Okay, I'm bouncing, I'm working it right here. I'm bouncing very, very slow. Now, once you probably reel it in about five feet, give it a little hop, 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 hop. Just give it a little bit more action. Get that curly, get that, um, get this, uh, get this uh, curly tail, a little action there. So you're just gonna give it a little hop, hop. And again, these are very subtle. This is not a jerk. We're not fishing like a jerk bait. We're not fishing a popping cork or anything. This is just a hop, hop. And then you're just gonna reel it down. And you're gonna hop, hop. And that's all you're really doing is you're just, you know, keeping that swimming mullet right above the bottom. Right above the bottom. You might hop it up about 
four or five inches off the bottom and then it's going to go right back down. And it's going to go up and it's going to go right back down. That's the technique that you want to use for flounder fishing. It's very, very easy. Your first catches of flounder, you probably won't even know that you have a flounder on because that flounder is going to come up, it's going to ambush it, and you're going to feel like it's just a steady pull on your line. It's not going to feel like a drum where it's just going to like smack it per se. Maybe it will. But a lot of times those flounder, it's just going to be a steady pull. And that's how you know that you have a flounder on, not a trout or a drum. Trout are going to jump. You know, drum are going to be super, super aggressive with their strikes. Flounder, not so much. That's why the technique for flounder fishing is very, very important. The hook set is extremely important. And guys, and YouTube, America, the world, let's set the record straight. For flounder fishing, when you feel that bite, when you feel that tick, whatever, set the hook, rip its jaw. And now let's get to the third topic and that is locations. Where to target the flounder. If you're ambushing something, you're gonna hide. So that's what flounder do. They hide, they use sand, they even use mud, they use grass. Of course, they use rocks. So where you see rocks, bridges, um, sand to rock, that's another great, um, that is a, another great indicator of flounders, of changing in the structures of bottom. Uh, you also hear oyster beds are great. Honestly, just look for structure. Now, you're also gonna look for maybe like moving water and then still water. So where you have like an inlet where that tide's ripping in or it's ripping out. And then you might have where most inlets, you know, they like come in and then you can either go left or right in the intercoastal waterway. So behind those eddies, if you have like riprap or rocks or even like a bridge piling around each of those eddies where that inlet's coming in uh, to an intercoastal waterway, guaranteed you will find flounder stacked up. With that incoming tide or even an outgoing tide, you might fish the mouth of that inlet. That's what flounder will do is they will ambush anything that's coming in with the tide and coming out with the tide. So moving water and structure, you cannot go wrong. So where you have like drop-offs, shallow water to deep water, those flounder a lot of times they're gonna sit on, uh, maybe like on a high tide, they're gonna pull up to that shallow water, to the shallow flats. So that's where I'll target them. As you'll see on the other side of this bridge, that's like an area that you would wanna target on a high tide. And then on a low tide, you're gonna go look for those drop-offs uh, where you know you're, you're gonna throw right up to the pilings you're also gonna throw up uh, to some of the rocks and it's okay you're gonna get hung up uh, but that's just part of it the more that you get hung up likely the more flounder that you're gonna catch this is kind of another area you the first scenario is you're gonna have like bridges docks and kind of inlets deeper water than the other scenario is gonna be kind of like a marsh creek you know flat area you also kind of want to look for like the mouths of creeks where that tide's gonna you know kind of pull out that outgoing tide, high and outgoing, is a great tide to catch flounder here at the mouths of these creeks. Um, so again, you know, just look for that structure, look for that moving water, understand that flounder are ambush predators. So don't get discouraged when you're flounder fishing. Keep on it, keep learning. Again, I'm Jeff and Christy and I, my wife, we are One Fish, Two Fish and we make YouTube videos. We do about uh, two to three every week. So please do us a favor and drop us a line, drop us a thumbs up and subscribe for our weekly videos. All right, y'all. Thanks for watching and peace out.